Welcome back, makers. Today, we're going to take a little journey through time. We're going to travel to a simpler day, a day when you didn't need a $2,000 or even a $200 3D printer to make something out of plastic. We're going to go back to a time when you could make things out of plastic in your own oven. Now, I'm not talking about shrinky dinks, and I'm not talking about that weird goopy stuff that you would pour into the molds that were like the spider and the worm molds. And then, you know, you would plug it in and it would sit completely exposed on your countertop and it would get cherry red and then the stuff would congeal. And then you'd try and dig it out before it cooled down and you'd get like second degree burns on your knuckles. Um, not that stuff. I mean, I think that went away right about the same time as lawn darts. What I'm talking about is polymer clay. Now today I'm going to show you how to make a Kodama from Princess Mononoke. Kind of cool. I'm not a great sculptor, but I think we might be able to pull something off. And we're going to be able to do it for just a few dollars worth of materials and basically no tools. Basically. <laughs> Since this is an introduction to polymer clay, I'm gonna try and keep this as simple as possible. Not a lot of fancy tools um, and not a lot of material. I really only need two colors for this. We're gonna make a little Kodama here. And so what I'm gonna use is glow in the dark and I'm going to use some black. Uh, really, realistically, the amount of black I need to use for this, it's just for the eyes, it's really, super minimal. You could almost get away with just using the glow in the dark and then actually painting the eyes a little bit later, but we'll use some polymer clay as well. Now in this particular example, I've also used some translucent. So these are sort of specialty clays. I've used translucent and glow in the dark to create this color. Um, I've been working it a lot, so it's actually kind of getting a little grubby. Uh, one note, uh, one thing to, to keep in mind is when you're working with polymer clay, um, it picks up everything. So I'm working on just a, a piece of sort of heavy plate glass that I've taped to a piece of uh, foam core, but you just need to work on a surface that is clean. It's just gonna lift everything off of the table and it also has plasticizers in it so you don't want to work on either a plastic surface um, because that can actually this can actually damage plastic or you don't want to work on something that's really a nice finish you know the uh, antique um, dining room table so protect your work surface and make sure that it's really clean i could also have just used just a regular, this is just a craft polymer clay. This is a little less expensive and I could just use white and black. These run, you know, these are about maybe a little over a buck. These are a little over $2. So, you know, this is maybe a $3 project versus maybe a $7, $8 project. So it's kind of up to you. You can get away with quite a bit and not really go overboard with this. All right, enough of that. For our little Kodamas, this is just gonna be a hand building exercise. We're not gonna be doing anything too fancy. I'll try and give you a little bit of reference here on the sizes of things. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll a ball for the body. And it's gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of about an half an inch to maybe five eighths of an inch in diameter. Now the thing about this is I kept making the bodies too big when I was kind of practicing for this and scale is really important in getting these things to look right and look kind of appropriate for the Kodamas. You know, you kind of want them to be whimsical and a little weird and wonky. So the heads are really big and the bodies are kind of uh, weird and, and tiny or really elongated and stretched. So scale is going to be something that you'll have to play with. Now what I did was I just sort of made it into a little cone and I flattened out the bottom just a tiny bit. Okay. Now once that's done, I'm going to take another little blob and I'm going to roll out 
the arms and the legs. There's not a lot of detail in the reference um, photos that I was looking at. Um, the hands actually, the arms and legs kind of just almost taper down to really little um, kind of points almost, like little blunt ends. So I'm gonna roll out a little um, snake. This is about a little over an eighth of an inch in diameter, maybe like three sixteenths. And I'm just going to cut some long pieces for the legs. I'm gonna go a little bit longer than I need because I don't want to have them turn out to be sort of stumpy and short and then have to go do them again. Polymer clay, once you sort of put it together, it will start to actually sort of stick on its own. And if you let that sit for a while, it'll actually start to fuse. So you don't wanna have to peel and remove and stick and put back, it, it starts to get kind of messy. Now for the legs, what I'm gonna do is just come in and I'm just gonna kind of slice off a little bit of a taper on the edge. And that's gonna make it easier for me to blend it into the body. So I'm just gonna come and here's my leg. I'm just gonna put it right on the bottom, sort of like that. And you can see how it really, that taper just makes it really easy and nice to just sort of blend that in. I'm gonna bend up the knee. And you can see I actually already sort of feel like I don't have enough leg, but I'm gonna just stretch it out a little bit. And I'm just gonna bend it, and there's its li the little foot. So I've got one leg. I'm gonna do the same for the other one. Now that one felt a little short, so I'm actually gonna go back in and I'm gonna give myself a bit more leg to work with. We're gonna trim it off anyway, so it can kind of be whatever. Again, just cut a little taper on it. That helps. So I'm blend that leg around. And I'm gonna come out. And this leg's gonna be sorta up. I'm gonna pinch just a tiny bit of that excess off. Taper out that foot a little bit. Now I can go back in and I can sort of work the um, blending points back here with the body, but I'm just gonna let that set for a minute. And you can see I've got it sort of asymmetrical, like this leg's a little bit sort of flopped over a little bit, this one's a little bit more vertical, and that's kind of nice. You know, you're kinda, you wanna give your, your character some character. So those are the legs. Okay, now we need some arms. And the arms, again, are going to be just a long snake. Make them a little bit thinner. But length on these, it's good to have a good amount of length on the arms. They want to kind of, we want them to kind of drape over. So, you know, maybe sort of like that. I can always pinch them a little bit shorter. Again, I'm just gonna sort of blend that edge, pre-blend that. I'm gonna come in and just sort of right at the shoulder. Yeah, bring that in. That was a little excessive in my arms. So he kind of has like he's just reaching over onto his leg there. I'm 
going to do the same. On the shoulder. So he's kind of maybe just hugging his knees a little bit as he's sitting there. Now, as you're working the clay, it will get softer. And if you, you find that you're handling it and it's getting kind of weird and mushy, it's best to just let it set and rest for a little bit and then you can come back. Or what you can do is you can put it in the refrigerator and sort of chill it down a little bit and that makes it a little bit um, stiffer and it allows you to work it um, and smooth it without having to worry about uh, mashing and distorting it as much. Now that's kind of the body. It's, you know, he's just sitting there hugging his knees as he's waiting around doing whatever Kodamas do. Now the next step is to make the head and that is just a big ball. Now the original ball for the body was maybe a half inch. You know, this probably is where, you know, the scale needs to kind of come in. Um, this is about maybe closer to three quarters. It feels maybe a tiny bit small. The heads are really just sort of weird and funky. Um, you know, things are more, whim you know, when you think about characters, big thing with big things with big heads as uh, opposed to the relationship to their body always feel more playful childlike kid-like and so that's maybe looking better so this is about really it's still about three quarters a little over that seven eighths now they're never kind of perfectly round so we don't want an actual ball ball but we do want something sort of ball-like, but kind of weird and a little misshapen is good. So something like that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some holes for the eyes and mouth. And for that, I'm just going to use um, the end of a paintbrush. Really, you could use whatever is handy. Um, the thing about the eyes if, is that they are kind of weird, different sizes. So what I'm doing is I'm just sort of working it and I'm working the clay out. So I've got a couple different sizes. And then I need a mouth. And they're always just weird and sort of offset and slightly, everything sort of three, maybe three different sizes. So this eye is a little bit bigger. This is a little bigger. And that's kind of looking good. And I actually kind of like it with it sort of tipped over like that. Now, at this point, what I could do is I could stick the head on the body, we could bake it, and then um, I could go in and maybe paint inside it. Or I could actually just do a slight depression instead of big holes, then go back and um, bake it and paint it. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit of black and I'm gonna make some little balls that kind of just drop in. And then what I'm going to do is just work it around so that it has just a little indentation in it. And it sort of is concave. I don't want to fill up the um, depression that I made. I kind of like that depth and shadow that it has by being slightly recessed it gives it just a little bit more something so you have to kind of be careful with that looks a little gigantic with how much 
you put in in the black. You can always start with a little less and add more if you need to. It's kind of hard to have a, too much and then go back. So I'm going to push that in. This also helps that hole to maintain its shape. And I got a little piece of something in there that's going to annoy me. So I'm just going to smooth that around. And again, this is just the end of a paintbrush. You could use really kind of anything that is that shape. You could take a stick and a piece of dowel, chopsticks you get from your glass takeout. Okay, and then the mouth, which is another tiny little piece. Maybe even tinier than that. Okay, so I'm going to push that in and just sort of work that around. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I like that. And, you know, the head gets a little weird as you're working it, so I'm just going to sort of pat that and make that. And I liked it sort of like that. I'm going to have it so that the, the body is slightly, I don't want it to be sort of up front here. I want the neck to sort of attach back sort of towards the back and I'm just going to mash that down and kind of be done with it. It's kind of weird looking. Now, the next step is to bake. And so a couple notes on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm just going to use a toaster oven that I've got kicking around. You can bake this in your oven. Um, the thing to keep in mind when you bake is you want to preheat your oven before you throw something in because initially for ovens to come up to temp, the, the heating elements tend to just really blast to get that temperature up really quickly. And so it's actually radiating and putting out a lot more heat than your final temperature. On a light color like this or like something like this or this or any of these lighter colors, if you just throw it in the oven while it's still sort of coming up to temperature, it will fry it, it'll burn it, and, and you'll be sort of out of all of your hard work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, fire up the toaster oven, get it up to temperature. Uh, each of these, these bake at about, um, always they're all about the same. This is 275 uh, Fahrenheit or 135C. Um, I actually have a little thermometer, oven thermometer, just to make sure that my toaster oven is, you know, it's cheap, it's, it's not accurate on the dial. So I wanna make sure that I'm about at the right temperature. And then the baking time says about 15 minutes for each quarter inch of thickness. Again, these are somewhere in a half inch to maybe three quarters of an inch. We'll bake it for maybe 30 minutes and uh, see what we end up with. It's better to sort of be, like I said, on lighter colors, be a little on the gentle side. You don't want to really burn them. Um, that could be bad and it really ruins the effect. So what I'll do now is fire up the toaster oven, get it up to temp, throw this in, bake it, and see where we land. Our Kodama is out of the oven and something's already looking a little, a little wonky. So rather than looking like you just has been frolicking through the sun-dappled forests of mystical, magical Japan. It kind of looks like he skipped town for spring break and was, you know, spending a lot of time drinking beer on South Padre Island and didn't put enough sunscreen on. He's a little golden brown, and that's really noticeable when you compare it to the base clay. 
This is where we started and this is where we ended up. He's definitely a little bit more on the crispy side. Now, what I did is immediately when I saw that, I put together another little Kodama and I threw it in the oven. This is the same sort of size, the same sort of mass and baked it at a lower temperature for less time. So this is 275 for 30 minutes. This is 250 for about 20 minutes. Keep in mind, this is all based on an $11 oven thermometer in a really cheap toaster oven. So your mileage may vary. This is what it should be. And it looks a lot more like the glow in the dark color, which is to be expected. It's changed a little bit and that's fine and normal, but this is definitely burned. Now, what that means is the recommended temperature and time on the package is, is a starting point. So if you're putting a lot of time and a lot of energy into a project and a lot of material, what you'll want to do before you bake it is do some test baking. Take some of the same material, same general thickness, and bake it for what you think is the right time and the right temperature and see if you get good results. Now these are quick and they're not a lot of material. And so I don't have a lot of emotional investment in these. I kind of do feel this was a better uh, sculpt. I'm not a sculptor, but this was a little bit better than this one. So I'm sad that this one was the one that got a little burnt. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, these are definitely things that I could uh, both chuck and then iterate on and not feel like I'm breaking the bank. And that is why I like polymer clay. Now, I hope you found this video useful, inspiring, and maybe inspires you to go out and make one of these for your very own. Um, please subscribe to my channel or hit that like button below. Both are better. And we'll see you back real soon for another project.